about time I did another plot tour. Now, it's been so dry here that some things aren't really doing quite so well, but we'll go through everything. I'll show you what's been going on. So these are the aubergines. This one is called Little Fingers. I've got a couple of those. It's absolutely chucking out so many gorgeous, gorgeous aubergines, but skinny little things living up to its name. Um, this one's called, I think, Black Beauty. Quite a few appearing on here as well. Now these have been really attacked by aphids. You can see here on the leaf, there's a lot of white fly and a lot of aphid um, mess, I guess. Um, I've been spraying with washing up liquid or dilute washing up liquid um, and also wiping the leaves, but some of them are going yellow. It's still producing fruit, so I'm not too worried. I'm just taking off the bottom yellow leaves and making sure I feed them properly. Um, this is the other little fingers one look at that beautiful that's a really big one there as well looks amazing and then hiding behind here is an even bigger one so I'm delighted with those I've already started harvesting quite a lot of aubergines this year it's, it's literally been my best year ever for them this is some recent planted lettuce. This is cost lettuce. I always grow this all the way through the year because I use it so much. There's a few little um, coriander seedlings just appeared there. I've direct sown them. I just chuck them in. Um, we'll see how they go. Carrots, these are the ones in the trug. So I guess it's a six foot by three foot trug filled with just multi-purpose compost. Um, this had garlic in it before and now it's got some carrots growing. These are autumn kings so they should stand well um, into the winter. Um, I did sow some more here but the weather has been so hot um, that watering has been quite difficult and these ones haven't really germinated as well. A bit sparse but there's quite a few there. I've also got carrots in buckets like this so this is filled with like a really sandy mix. There you go, there's one. It's not the biggest thing, but really super tasty. These are my parsnips here. I've only done one row of them. Um, I've got another plot where I've put quite a lot of them. Um, I don't actually eat that many, so um, I just did a token few in this garden. Um, these are all little dwarf French beans. These are really successful and really prolific. They're called Dior. Um, they're super, super tasty. Um, they are yellow. Um, they obviously change colour when you cook them, but that's one of them there. Now, I've had a mole, which some of you may have realised from my stories, but I've had a mole that completely destroys this whole bed. So the minute I plant something, like, for example, these lettuces um, or the multi-sown beetroot here, um, the minute I water, because it's been so dry, obviously all the worms come to the surface where I've watered, and um, literally dig underneath the plant. So essentially, unless I get down on my hands and knees and put my hands in the hole and collapse the burrow or the, collapse the tunnel or whatever they make, um, these plants are really suffering because they, they get to a certain point and there's a great big chasm underneath them. So I'm having quite a lot of trouble this year. Um, it's, yeah, it's quite disheartening, but I just keep, keep planting and, and hope for the best. But these beans are looking a little bit worse for wear now because I've literally had to replant them about five times. Usually if you, I won't do it now, but if you poke your hand down into the soil, you just get to a big, big gap uh, where the mole has gone underneath. They don't, moles don't actually destroy your vegetables in, in the fact that they don't eat them thing, but because of the hole, the roots stop growing. Um, yeah, it just disturbs, um, just you get tons and tons of root disturbance, which is useless. So this bed that is under the netting here, um, I am actually getting some proper steel hoops from a company called um, Shiara Eco Farm. 
and um, she's supplying me with some lovely steel hoops. Um, and then I bought some netting from, um, where have I bought that from? Quick Crop UK. And I'm going to re-net everything because this is obviously too loose and isn't really suitable. But basically I've just planted out all my brassicas, so we lift the covers off. So these are broccoli and Romanesco. And then I've got some Savoy cabbage. And then the rest of it is kale. We eat an awful lot of kale in this house. Let's just take that off totally for a minute. Oh, yeah, we do really like our kale. So I've got two different types here, Nero de Toscana and another dwarf type that I can't remember its name. And then under here, suffering a little bit because I didn't net them, um, is my kohlrabi. You can see they are sort of bulbing up. Never grown that before. Very good with coleslaw apparently, so I'm quite looking forward to that. And at the end, I've got some new courgettes that I've just planted out. So these are ones that I grew quite late. Hopefully they'll produce some good fruit. Fingers crossed they'll be all right. And at the end, here is all my lovely self-sown uh, oregano, which the bees absolutely love. I don't know if you see that bee on there. It's absolutely covered with bees all the time, so it's a joy to see. This skinny bed here is normally where I put all the lettuces. Um, there's some, you can see at the back, there's some um, Swiss chard, some celery, um, some sorrel, a bit of beet that's gone to seed, some more celery, and this is some lettuce that I've left go to seed. It's just starting to come into flower now. So that'll be great for all the pollinators. Excuse the dog, <laughs> that's Sophie. Um, that'll be great for all the pollinators and then I'll collect the seed to um, sell in my seed subscriptions next year. My seed subscriptions are something which are really good for people that aren't sure what to sow when. So the idea being is I save quite a lot of seed from my own garden. This is some more coriander. This one's actually doing better than the other side. I think because it's a bit um, damper in this corner. Um, yeah, the seed subscriptions basically work by um, I send seeds out at the right time to sow. So you'll get seeds sent every month um, for a subscription and they're at the right time. So it's nice and easy for people to work out what to sow when. There's more information of that on my bio and um, at www.queenofseed.co.uk. This is a really cute lettuce. I think I showed it to you over there, freckles. Really pretty. So it's like a little, I guess it's like a little gem. Um, but the leaves are dotted with these little freckles. So I like that one. And it's nice and small. You know, we don't, there's only two of us at this house. So I get way more food than I need to from this patch, um, which is great because I can give to friends and family and things. But little lettuces are great. This is the chard. Absolutely gorgeous. It's called Bright Lights. We eat a lot of this. Um, but... Yeah, it's gorgeous, all different colours. Hello, Sophie. Oops, um, she wants to go for a walk. So that's one I always grow called Bright Lights. So the cold frame has got all my dwarf tomatoes in. Uh, a couple of these are heritage varieties. I've got a Rosella purple, purple heartthrob. Um, they are in shade some of the day, but they don't seem to mind. You can see they are kicking out some Lovely looking fruit there. But it's a bit of a mess as dwarf tomatoes do. You know, you don't prick out the side shoots in a dwarf tomato. So it's just gone a bit like a jungle. But there's a lot of fruit in here. So I'm looking forward to sampling all these ones. Loads of flowers too. Just want to show you what's going on in the shed. So this is my drying area at the moment. Um, shed has literally been taken over by onions and garlic so don't know if you've seen my posts but this is my homemade drying rack it works perfectly it's a just a metal cage or a metal um rack i guess um but you can poke the onion through and it's supported on two chairs um and they dry so you get lots of air behind them 
and it can house tons and tons of them. So here I've got some reds, some shallots and some white onions. And then left over, I've got some um, Rose de Roscoff onions. Lovely, beautiful pink colour. They don't store brilliantly, those ones, so I'm going to be having to eat those soon. And then these ones here um, are all for pickling. So these are smaller, kind of, they're either Paris white or um, white Spanish, a mixture of both of them. And they're for pickling, so perfect size for the pickle jar. In fact, anything that's too small, so for example, this little shallot, no point in doing anything with that but um, perfect for the pickle so um, that's what this rack is doing with some more red onions under there as well so yeah absolutely tons and I have to kind of squeeze my way around it all to uh, get a look in at the moment but you can't really dry them in full sun so it's the only option I've got nice and airy and um, away from direct sunlight and there's the garlic plaques that I had plaited up the other day. Um, I did a video on how to do that and then uh, I've got some herbs, oregano and some rosemary just hanging up the shed because it's quite high. Absolutely perfect for drying things. This is a, um, a shed my husband made me so a um, lot of love for this shed. Right that's enough of that. I'll show you what's going on in the greenhouse. So at the moment it's covered in shaded netting because it gets so hot in here. It's been 52 degrees here in the greenhouse, which to be fair has played havoc with the tomatoes. Um, I've suffered a little bit, or some of the tomatoes have suffered a little bit with um, blossom end rot, which I've had maybe once in the whole time I've been growing tomatoes. So it's a bit disappointing and I can only put it down to the fact that it's really difficult to get watering consistent when um, it's so hot in here and I work full time so I'm away for the whole day. So down here chilies and peppers have been amazing. This is Hungarian hot wax. Uh, look at the colour of that, it's like a lollipop, amazing. Um, there's some block peppers at the back, so some bell peppers, another Hungarian hot wax at the back. So all of these I'll dry, I'll make pastes, um, all sorts of things destined for canning and food saving this is tabasco um oh no sorry this one is tabasco all these fruits are sticking bolt upright they're very amusing and then this is uh, a thai chili i eat a lot of thai food this one is a mild chili pepper this one is called anaheim quite big actually i've not grown this one before um, this is one that I have shared with my seed subscribers, so they have had this one this year as well. And um, this is called Zimbabwe Black. Absolutely beautiful looking plant. Look at that colour of it's amazing. Um, little fruits now starting to appear. Got peppers at the back. These are looking super. I've harvested quite a lot of these already. Very funny growing shape on that one. <laughs> Um, now peppers and chilies don't mind obviously the heat um, they don't really like it too direct so the shading is great for them and they don't need to be watered all the time so they have been quite happy with sort of sporadic watering this is an orange habanero just starting to appear there this one's been really slow it's um flowered a lot but has been really slow to produce fruit unlike the other ones um you'll see on here as well I'm suffering a bit in the greenhouse from white fly. Um, again, I've been spraying and it's been a really bad year for me for aphids. Um, I need more ladybirds, to be honest. I do have a really biodiverse garden um, and I grow a lot of flowers as well. So I really try to um, get as much biodiversity as possible. So I really hope things take care of themselves. But this year I've really noticed that the greenhouse and those aubergines have really suffered. So this uh, is one of my favourite chilies, for colour anyway. This is called Buena Mulata. Look at the colour of that. And it is stacked with fruit. So you can see these little um, 
tea bags are sometimes on the fruit and this is because I'm isolating this fruit for seed. So the idea is that you pop that on, um, it doesn't get cross pollinated and then you can harvest the seed from that particular chilli to pass on for the following year. So quite a few of them have got little hats on. This is um, something called um, jalapeno. You can see there, they're appearing there. They'll be going into pickling jars as well. And this one here is called Bishop's Crown. I grow this one just because it's just a, the most amusing shape. Um, it actually is a really tasty one as well. It goes bright orange. Um, it's also called Friar's Hat. Um, these chilies here are all in pots, the ones on the shelf here. I wanted to do an experiment to see which would fare better, the ones in the greenhouse bed or the ones in the pots. And actually at the moment, kind of depends on which variety. Um, I would say they're kind of equal. Um, they're probably a bit bigger in the beds and I guess that is obviously for the obvious reason that they can, um, they can uh, obviously get their roots further into the ground. But the pots, you know, they're not massive pots. Uh, I think they're like a five litre, uh, two litre pots. You can see by that old label there. Um, two litre pots, so yeah, they're doing really, really well. That's an amazing amount of fruit there. That's Tabasco again. There's a few aubergines in here. Again, same kind of experiment. Wanted to see which was going to go better, the ones in the pots or the ones in the greenhouse border. And actually the ones in the pots are faring much better. Um, this plant's looking super healthy, but hasn't really kicked out many fruits or hasn't kicked out any fruits yet, sorry. This is the first fruit. Cute, look at that. It's called white casper. Looks like a beautiful, perfect white egg. Very excited about that. Look at this fruit. Look at the shape of that, it's mad. This is a black beauty, but the fruit is, yeah, weird. So tomatoes hiding under there. And then this one is called Estonian mini cherry. I mean, it is prolific. Tons of little baby fruits. This is called indigo cherry drop. Um, this one is called chocolate chestnut. Look at the color of those fruits, amazing. Okay, so this really isn't on. Look at this. Two tomatoes completely destroyed by something. Oh, absolutely distraught about that. Who's eating those? There has been a blackbird in here. I wonder whether that's done it. Right, the back there is something called honey drop. Looking super. Look at the colours on that vine. Amazing. This one is sun gold. Again, vine's looking really good. It's like an orange cherry. It's an F1, which means you can't save the seed, sadly. This is Marmande. Lovely beef tomato. Some of those just going off now. Colour sort of turning blush. Love that when they sort of that green blush, almost muddy colour. Uh, just some more tomato fruits. This one's Bloody Butcher. And then, oh, this one's great. This one is called Amethyst Jewel. The colour of that. Absolutely gorgeous. You can see up the top there in those pots, that's my watermelon. I'll just show you that. So this has just been sat in pots and I just love it. You can see the tiniest of fruit here. I don't suppose now it will do very much, but it's looking very happy. So I'm just letting it grow and the leaves are in the most amazing shape. So there we are, that's the greenhouse. So this is just a mismatch of all sorts of things, but it is like a pollinator paradise. Loads of verbena, 
some echinaceas. This is from um, Charles Dowding, actually. It's um, a plant called Leonotis, also known as Jagger. Most amazing flower heads on it. And you can eat these um, flowers. You can't eat the rest of the plant, but you can eat the flowers. They're a bit like honeysuckle. That's sort of like some mad kind of tall, spiky thing. Very interesting plant. Um, yeah, so this is just through. Look how beautiful it is. This is an aster. There's um, Buddleia, some Rebecca, and then hiding down here, Nicotana. You can see it's just a mess. I mean, there's no rhyme or reason. I just plant what I like and let it all get on. But um, for bees, insects, all sorts, it's really, really a mecca for for them. Um, some more echinaceas, Californian poppies. This is a really pretty clematis. I'm not sure what it's called. It begins with a P. Um, pre pre Prevokia or something like that. Some cornflowers at the back there. And I love this one. This is scabious. Black scabious. Like a pin cushion. Absolutely gorgeous. And then over here, oh, got stuck on something. Over here is um, the rose bed, which is filled with verbena as well and some cosmos. Just want to show you. Oh, God, I'm getting caught up. Um, this is the Bee Hotel. You would have seen videos of this earlier, probably. Just want to show you what it looks like when the bees are filled. You can see these cavities have all been filled up. So that is absolutely stacked full of more baby bees to come. It's a company called UK Mason Bees, but lots of different holes there for different kinds of species. And they forage around the garden, obviously. So that's it. Hope you've enjoyed the little tour. And I'll see you soon. Have a nice day.